America's comic book champions, swinging into action, grabbing our attention, luring new readers. Bob Brown takes you behind the scenes with those marvelous Marvel heroes when 2020 continues. 25 years ago, 1961, now there is a notable year. John Kennedy became president. Alan Shepard became the first American in space. The bikini became fashionable. And Marvel Comics made its debut. Now, for the uninformed, or those of you who were reared on Flash Gordon or Archie or Superman, you may be surprised to learn that Marvel Comics is now the king of America's comic book publishers. They've done it despite a lot of heavy competition, and they've had to keep pace with changing tastes. How did they pull it off? Well, strap yourselves in. Bob Brown is going to tell us. of comic books, Marvel Comics. And this is Jim Shooter, who began writing for comic books when he was 13 years old and is now Marvel's editor-in-chief. Okay, we're going to be done today? Yeah. Good. Good. We're in the next hour. thing is coming down to the wire. Comics started out as a schlock medium. Most of the guys who worked in comic books at the beginning changed their names so that they wouldn't become associated with comics. We have become legitimate as a medium. And most of the people who are here today in the industry came here because during the 60s as comics came into their own they got excited by it and they, they've grown up wanting to be in comics. You read the Marvel Age? Yeah, so where they three people die will issue 210. With 100 million dollars in annual sales between 7 and 8 million issues each month Marvel now accounts for more than half the comic book market. But for the industry in general, total sales are only 15 to 20 percent of what they were in the best years, the 1940s, when Americans bought nearly one billion copies in a year. One source of Marvel's strength and continued growth has been its diversification. Publishes 12 of the 15 top-selling comic books, supported by regular in-house heroes such as Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk, but also cashing in on outside trends, winning the rights to do Star Wars comics and Care Bear and G.I. Joe. Hallelujah. Publishing biographies of the Pope and Nobel Peace Prize winner Mother Teresa doing issue-oriented material on drug abuse or child abuse, donating proceeds from their best-selling comic, The X-Men, to African famine relief, tapping the teen and adult market with issues like The New Mutants and slick publications called graphic novels. And there's more. Good, okay. Over yeah. on the other side of the country, Marvel is in TV and the movies. It's a trap! We've been set up! These people are recording the voices for what will eventually become an animated Saturday morning cartoon produced from Marvel's Hollywood offices. Get me down, fool! Get me down! Yeah, okay, but a little more angry. You'd be really angry. The company is currently churning out 250 half-hours of animated series, as well as three feature-length cartoons keeping a lot of executives occupied in weighty discussions. You mean they're normal-looking cuffs? They're normal-looking cuffs. When they get the shrinky dust, they shrink and they grow the ears. Right. And Production head right. Margaret right. Lesh is presiding over a casting session for the characters perched cutely at the other end of the table, the shrinky dinks. 
Well, we don't know yet whether the Shrinky Dinks will make it into the Marvel stable of characters. More importantly, it's time now to introduce you to one more character at this meeting. The man in the sunglasses. A creative supervisor without whom everything we've just shown you and the history of comic books in general would be a far, far different story. His name is Stan Lee, and before he helped revolutionize the comic book industry 25 years ago, he had labored for 20 years before that as a writer and editor at Timely Comics, the predecessor of Marvel. These are the types of comics Stan Lee was writing in those early years, from romances to westerns, keeping teams of artists busy drawing the books at the prodigious rate of two per week. Was there ever a time early in your career than when you'd go to a cocktail party and somebody would ask you, well, what do you do? And you'd have to say, oh, I write comic books or... Uh, yes, it. really, very often in the early days, uh, before Marvel. Uh, I'd be at a party with my wife and somebody would come over and just as you say, what do you do? And I'd get a little bit nervous and I'd say, well, I, I'm a writer. And they'd say, oh, really? What do you write? Well, I still had a couple of options. I'd say, uh, I write magazine stories. And I'd start to walk away, but what magazines? Well, I still had a chance and I would say, well, children's magazines. Which ones? At some point I was pinned down and it had to be comic books. And then, oh, I see, and they drift away. To make things worse, the General Motors of the comic industry at that time was a rival company, DC Comics, which had a corner on the superhero market with Superman and Batman. Then, in 1960, Stan Lee was asked to create a superhero team for his company, which would publish the story as the first Marvel comic. His idea of what superheroes should be embodied in a group called the Fantastic Four, would redefine the form. Before the Marvel superheroes, um, the superheroes you read about really never had to worry about making a living. Women always were in love with them. They didn't have to worry about getting dates. They were always pushing the girls away. Uh, they didn't have to worry about acne or dandruff or fallen arches or anything like that. <laughs> of the main characters constantly bickered at each other. And Stan Lee went on to create Spider-Man, a superhero who was also worried about how to get a high-paying job. Now, if you can do the same thing in front of the lights and cameras, you'll have it made. The Incredible Hulk, a kind of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde hero. The Silver Surfer, who frequently agonized uncertainly over the state of humankind and others like Thor, God of Thunder, and Doctor Strange. 